John D. Brown. Welcome to another day of CWA Championship Wrestling. Well, I'm certainly hoping and I'm confident that this week is going to be much more pleasant than last week. We're going to have for you here today, the King will be here. Also, Texas Dirt will be along a little bit later on. Freddie and Jason will be here, too. And a special announcement coming up for you in just a couple of minutes. Let's go ahead and get it underway, and we'll be back with you right after these messages. Disgusting. Those were the best matches ever booked here last week that Ronnie P. Gossett booked. I brought real class back to this organization. I've got people on the street coming up to me. I've got cards and letters pouring in, wanting me to remain as CWA promoter. I've got, we've had cards and letters and telephone calls coming in all week, too, and they've said exactly the opposite of that. And I tell you what, I am very happy to say you are not the promoter for a week. You can take your silly cap off. We're going to bring back the real promoter the real right promoter now. Is right here. Welcome Ronnie back, Brown. Eddie Marlin. <laughs> Eddie, welcome back. First thing I want to tell you, Ronnie Gossett, every dog has his day, fat boy, and you had your week. I'm back. I'm taking over. No, I'm signing the matches, and you will do exactly what you're told to do. You will have your men out here and have them in the ring when I tell you to have them out here. I booked it. You, you, you banned me. You wouldn't let me come to the arenas. That was the best thing that ever happened to the CWA, you well, being banned. I didn't want to ban you, big boy, because I want you right here. I want you to see everything that takes place. And later on, I've got something special for you. What have you got for me later on? You'll find out. I want to know now. What have you got? You'll find out when I want you to find out. Now, this wild side they're tough they're rough they got the belts they, they are like my cwa tag team champions Get them out here i've got a team to go against them get your boys out here who are they wrestling you'll find out when they get in the ring just get them out here boy please keep action please bring them all out here bring all the big time we guys out big out big out there. every day we keep don't care who you bring out here, here. who you bring out here anymore Get them bring out, out Chris Frank. Bring them. Bring them out. All right. Not anybody. I don't care who they bring out here. something, you old fossil. Belcher at stake, right, Eddie? Belcher at stake. All right, come on back here. Join us at a CWA title match, tag title match. Yeah, Gossett can be upset all he wants to, but uh, Eddie Marlin says, let's do it. It's going to be Jeff Jarrett and the King challenging for the belts held by the wild side mark star and chris champion and their manager ronnie b gossett can just watch him suffer eddie's going to put the belts right here on the table all right well the referee Referee Jerry Calhoun showing the belts right there. The belts are at stake. The King, Jerry Lawler out of Memphis, Tennessee. Hendersonville, Tennessee's Jeff Jarrett going against the Wild Side. Mark Starr, Chris Champion, and the Wild Side in danger of losing their CWA tag belts. Action underway. Ronnie P. Gossett steam wandering around the ring area. Back on the rope, Jeff Jarrett. Knee lift by Chris Champion. What is Jerry Calhoun doing back in here? I fired him last week. You're not the you, have, you don't have the authority to fire nobody. You just get up to the ring. <laughs> Count too fast, says Mark Starr. Well, he's got one, two, three, that's five. He's an official one, referee. Two, three. He's an official referee. Calhoun. He's criticized.
inside for a fast count here. I think it should be pointed out that uh, Calhoun is a sanctioned referee and several different alliances and uh, he's, he's a veteran in there good grief the wild side just using every opportunity to complain about having to put their belts up Eddie yeah Calhoun's probably the best referee in the wrestling profession whoa he counted two <laughs> once again the wild side says whoa he's counting real fast Lawler said a little slow there Jerry <laughs> Lawler and Jeff Thought he was counting slow. The wild side thought he was counting way too fast. A slam by Mark Starr and a cover. Count of two. And he breaks out of it at a two count. And now, champion. And now, you can see Black. Are you going to sit down? Didn't you complain about him counting too fast? Wait a minute. You got Calhoun in the back pocket. Yeah, weren't they just over here complaining that he was counting too fast? Yeah, I don't know. The king comes off the rope, and boom, he does a 180-degree turn, Mark Starr does, after the king nails it. Starr claims he was hit by a fist. He probably was when Lawler came off the rope. Champion not too thrilled to get in here. Champion turned his back on the tag. Waller, uh-oh, back into the corner. Champion hold him up from outside. He's up out of the way. And Mark Starr runs into Chris Champion. Starr, down to apologize to his partner. Meanwhile, the referee told him to count. He had to get back in there. He would have been counted out. Ronnie P. Gossett controlling Chris Champion down at ringside here. Waller drops his legs out from under him. The referee says, uh-uh, King, don't do it. Oh, you're right. Jeff Jarrett had one leg, Lawler the other, and Mark Starr crawls over to the corner. Ronnie P. Gossett over hey, here. Hey, Brown, now you call that fair, what that Lawler and Jared are doing to my men. You call that fair. You're sitting here next to this old fossil. He'll answer to anything. Well, I, I did notice that uh, they did gain the advantage over your man there, Ronnie. Oh, big right hand by Mark Starr. Jeff Jarrett. I noticed Gossett didn't see that fist. There's a broad arm across the back. Chris Champion in now. Champion, boy, he steamed. He grabs Jarrett. Fires him into the rope. A big drop kick by Champion, and Jarrett hits the mat. Champion threw something at Lawler. I don't know what it was, but Lawler came in after him. Referee sends him back outside. Meanwhile, Mark Starr has come in. I don't think they made a tag, but it doesn't really matter. The referee didn't see it, and Starr is the one that's staying in there. The important thing is that Jeff has been doubled up on here, and he needs to get to the corner and get a tag on the king. They kind of jumped Jeff, the two of them. Oh, look at Jeff block him. And he suplexes Chris Champion. Great move by Jeff Jarrett. Jeff, there you see him, reaches it for the corner, and he gets the tag. Here comes Waller. Jeff comes down. You know what that means, he's taking on the both of them. Boom, heads together. Jeff Jarrett nails Mark Starr. Lawler. What is this? Gossett up in the ring. Nails Lawler from behind. And now holds him up. And when Jerry Calhoun sees him, that's going to be a disqualification. 
Oh my goodness, Chris Champion's got the snake. He's got that ball to trickle out and got out of the way. He's got it around Ronnie P. Johnson's neck. Lawler and Jeff Jarrett are going to win it by disqualification. They're not going to get the belts, but they're going to win the match. And Champion has that snake. Ronnie P. Gossett. I think he's going to need the heart medication after this one, Eddie. <laughs> he did ask for it. He's the one that encouraged him to bring that stupid snake in here last week to begin with. Ronnie P. Gossett. Down in the ring. And, uh, yeah, where, where'd that snake come from, Mark Starr? Well, don't ask us what is this. What is it? Oh, yeah, Ronnie. You call that fair? They have given me a heart attack. Hey, it was you your guys that brought it in. What are oh, you complaining about? That was Jerry Lawler. You brought the oh. snake out here. One of your oh. guys brought the snake out oh. here. Let me tell you something. I'll be all right soon so I get my medicine. Oh. Let me tell you something, Ronnie Gossett. You, your oh. boys survived this match. They held on to the belts oh. thanks to you and the oh. snake. But it's another team I want to talk to you about is the Rock and Roll Express. I want to talk about the Rock hey, and hey, Roll wait, wait, wait. First, I've had a heart attack. You want to talk about the Rock and Roll? Stand here and recover oh. from your heart attack. We've got oh. some videotape from Rock and Roll yeah, Express. Let's, show let's, that. let's listen oh. to what they have to say. Oh. You know, Ricky, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You, show you know, last right. week, baby, things happened with me and you were in like a handicap match. This time, it's our turn. What it's going to be is like... Two, it's going to be the wild side and the blackbirds with their legs together like it's here. You want to talk about a three-legged race? You know Ronnie Gossip, when you was the promoter for the Wee Brothers, you tried everything to get rid of the Rock and Roll Express. Well, promoter Eddie Marley come out and he told us, he said, Woo-hoo! you got to take the salt right with the sugar. And that's what's going to happen. This time, the blackbirds' feet are going to be taped together. And can you imagine them stepping, the stepping inside the ring, Robert, doing this number right here? You see what I'm saying? And this little wild side the same thing for you. You see, brother, you took advantage of us last time, but it's not going to be that way again. What you gave us, brother, we're going to give you twice as much because you can't move around, baby, unless both of you are doing this right here. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to do You'll see. <laughs> You're going to find out, baby, that rock and roll is here to stay, and we're going to take care of business. All right. Yeah, they had that handicap match, uh, rock and roll against two tag teams. That's right. You had them booked against two tag matches, two tag teams. Listen, Eddie Marlin, I booked that match out of the kindness of my heart to save the people from being bored to death. I, both teams wanted the rock and roll. They wanted both teams, so I made it one match. All right, Ronnie Gossett, if you did it out of the kindness of your heart, I booked the same match back. Just one stipulation. Fellas, come on out here. I had these guys to get ready. Get on out here and let well, Ronnie Gossett see his team. What are you team. pulling, Eddie Martin? What are you trying to pull? I'm not pulling anything. I just booked the match. Why don't you, go get, why why don't you go get your guys, Ronnie? <laughs> Ronnie Gossett said he booked it out of the kindness of his heart. If he can be kind, I can be kind to you, Brown. I just well, want him to see what happens when he sees his men. Same match. Okay, here, the, here they come into the area right here. Well, they're moving kind of slow, too, I see. <laughs> what are you trying to call anymore? Got them taped together what here. And you ever heard of a three-legged race? Well, right a wrestling match. Well, well, you have now. 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 The Rock and Roll Express is against these guys right here. They can't, they can't wrestle like this. What's this tape doing on my man? Looks, Looks like they're going to have to, Ronnie. Got the three-legged race stipulation here with uh, two teams in there, but taped together. That'll keep them from uh, being all over the place. Hey, Marlin, you are lower than that snake that was in the ring. Only an idiot like you could have thought something. Ronnie like Gossett, you said you booked this match last week. I booked it this week. Now you can get your man and get out of here. That's oh, right. Let's take a break. We'll be back with you. That's your problem. Championship Wrestling is headed to Princeton, Kentucky, Friday night, September the 8th, with an all-star card, including the Rock and Roll Express, Bill Superstar Dundee, and Freddie. Don't miss the action this Wednesday night, Orangeboro, Kentucky. 
opening match, Dale Mann versus Don Harris. Tennessee Street Fight, Bill Dundee and Dustin Rhodes versus Black Bart and the Dirty White Boy. Handicap match, Dundee joins Midget's Farmer John and the Little Road Warrior to battle the Master of Pain. Buddy Landell will be blindfolded when he meets referee Frank Morrell. Tag action, Jason and Freddie take on Harold Harris and Nate the Rat. Added match, loser leaves town, Texas Dirt wrestles the Master of Pain. Handicap tag action, three-leg race rules, the Rock and Roll Express versus Wild Side and the Blackbirds. And the main event, Lumberjack match, six wrestlers stationed at ringside as Jerry the King Lawler gets his shot at Ronnie P. Gossick. Six wrestlers around the ring. Don't miss the action. Wednesday night, Owensboro, Kentucky. Eddie Marlin, you bumming idiot. You're trying to railroad us in Owensboro, Kentucky. Look what you did to my main man, Nate the Rat. I went up there as a referee, and I called that match right down the line, and that dadgum promoter, Eddie Marlin, put me and Harold Harris against that Freddie and that freak Jason. I don't know, man, I don't know why they all mad at me. I called it right down the line. And if that's not bad enough, you got my wild side strapped that's together. That's in a three-legged sack race. What kind of match is that, Ronnie? We got our legs tied together. How can we beat the Rock and Roll Express with our legs tied together, Ronnie? And Buddy Landell, you're going to be blindfolded. Well, that's the greatest place in the world to have a stinking match, the armpit of the world, Owensboro, Kentucky. Let me tell you something, Frank Morrell, they got me blindfolded, but I don't ever ask for it easy, baby. Stack the deck against me because I'm telling you something. I get my hands on you, I'm going to kill you. If that's not bad enough, Lawler, you'll do anything to get it, Ronnie Gossett. You got all your stooges in a lumberjack matches with straps. Every time I roll my big behind out, they're going to strap me like a big fat hog. That's in Owensboro, Kentucky, Wednesday night. Be there. Well, the real promoter, Eddie Marlin, back with us today. Glad to have you back. As I said at the beginning of the program, I thought it was going to be a much more pleasant day, and it certainly has been so far. Look how Texas dirt out right yeah. now. Texas is something else, isn't it? Yeah, he sure is. Out here under the mask, the man from Texas. How you doing? My name is Texas Dirt, and I'm from Dirt, Texas. Eddie I never, Marlin. I never met you. You must be Mr. Dave Brown. Pleased to meet you, Texas Dirt. You know, I got a little... You're the promoter here, right? That's right. And now, as uh, promoter, can you make matches? Yes, sir. I made all of these today. Oh, well, you can make them. Well, I got a little problem here. You see, they got some kind of stipulation. Every time I go in the ring, they say uh, that if they pull this hood off and I'm Dutchman tail, I got to leave the CWA plus get fined $5,000. Now, I ain't got $5,000 because I'm dirt poor. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, I think that master of pain, he ought to have the same stipulation because if he, I think if he loses, he ought to be forced to leave the CWA. Can you make that match for me? Yes, sir, I certainly can. You can make the match? Yes, now, sir. If he loses, he has to leave the CWA. Is that right? That's right. Hey, do y'all like that match there? Okay, good. Okay, so what, if, if I lose, I leave. If he loses, he leaves. Is that right? That's right. You got to understand that, Texas. You know, they done old Dutch man tail dirty. What you're trying to pull out here making matches, matches that he leaves the CWA. Just because you're the promoter, you don't rule the roost. Do you hear me? I don't rule the roost, young man, but I've got a contract on you, and I've got a contract on him, and i got one on him. I can sign any match I want to. That's right. And That's I'm right. Sign the, match. the loser leaves town. It's not fair for one man to go in the ring and have to put up that, and the other one is just got free. Neither so is it fair for this idiot to come back as Texas Dirt when Herbert. everybody knows who he is. These is. morons don't want to admit it, but he's Dutch Mantel, is and the, you're not that stupid. Hey, fat boy, you. wait a minute. Is the match set or not? Well, Let me tell you something. The match well, has been me. signed. Well, you better listen, big boy. The match has been <laughs> signed, and a match... No. Of this caliber, I think, needs a special referee. I do, too. Right. I think it needs a special referee. Dave. All right. It needs a special referee. I guess Eddie's going to go find a special referee there for the match. Yeah, this is a conspiracy if I ever saw one. We don't need a special referee. We don't even need to be a referee. I beat Dutch Mantel. One, two, three, right in the middle of the ring, and look at him. He stands over there with that goofy-looking mask on his head saying that he's Texas, Texas dirt. dirt. I put him down, one, two, three, and he's still here. And now you're going to try and tell me if that piece of bogus trash beats me, then I'm going to have to leave. Let me tell you something, Dave Brown. My man, the master of pain, has retired more people than Social Security, and he can retire that man's head. Oh, look at this. Told me to come out here and offer my service as a special hey, referee. Let me tell you something. That mask is an improvement over that ugly mug, but you're not fooling anybody. Everybody knows you're Eddie Marlin. What are you trying to pull? 
Only thing I know is Mr. Marlin sent me out here to be Mr. the special Marlin, referee. Anywhere. If the match where the loser of the fall leaves town, and I will be the special referee. You will be nothing of a well, special referee. That's with that idiot. Ronnie. He's not fooling anybody. He may fool these belligerent idiots out here, but he don't fool Ronnie if he got it in the master of pain. Any moron can tell that's Eddie Marlin. You can tell for one reason he don't have any teeth. Well, well, you better fix this, because I'm telling you right now, I beat him once, and I'll beat him again. I but if I beat him again, he I won't get up. Look at this rinky-dink idiot back again like it wasn't him out here before. It's the guy I sent out here for the special, rec the special the referee team out here. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, I, I just, I just want to face. make sure we had a special referee. Yep. Yep. So special, special referee is out here. He's signed. You, you senile old fossil. Listen, we've got a match coming up here. Oh, if you could, I'm not uh, through here with this idiot. Yeah, I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. That guy like... Last week, he had a lot of trouble tagging, so I put him in a match where he wouldn't have to tag. He's in there by himself. Let him handle it all. You have to get me one way or another. Ronnie, do something about yeah, that's, well, that's, that's a very good point, and, and I think a good move there on Eddie Marlin's part. Last week, Spike Huber was booked by Ronnie Gossett as a partner with Jerry Lawler. And uh, you're right, Eddie. Uh, Huber just, he, he would refuse to tag. He'd have to tie his boots. He'd have to make some sort of adjustment, and uh, he just never would get in there. This week, he won't have to worry about tagging, Dave. He's in there from the beginning against Texas Dirt. Texas Dirt. From Dirt, Texas, he says, wrestles under the mask by Huber. Huber's a big guy. He's out of Indianapolis, Indiana. A veteran wrestler. And boy, I tell you what, Texas Dirt. Not letting up on him. Look at that. Nice leg drop. Texas Dirt. Got to get some in the half crab. Huber able to block that. Takes Texas Dirt's feet away from him. But Texas Dirt immediately up. Mike Huber. Didn't get the name quite right there. He didn't call him Texas Dirt. Sounds like Huber's been listening to Ronnie P. Gossett. But I'll tell you what, Texas Dirt immediately went to work on him. One of those things where uh, Dirt says, hey, you can talk all day if you want to. I'm here to wrestle. Look out. Flip out of the corner by Spike Huber. We're a minute and a half into the action. Big body slam. Texas Dirt lying in the middle of the ring. Huber sits down on him with the upper leg. There's a cover. Down a one. Whoa, I thought maybe he had a chance of holding him down there. But Texas Dirt broke out of it at the two count. That's a right fist, no doubt about it, by Texas Dirt. Texas Dirt. Nailing him back in the corner. Referee, whoa, pulling Dirt back. And when Huber kicks Texas Dirt, the referee goes down to the mat. Now here comes the master of pain sent in by Ronnie P. Gossett. Texas Dirt ducks out of the way. Huber gets knocked down by the master of pain. Referee's right there. And a count of three. Texas Dirt gets a win. But look. Now you take a good look at your Texas Dirt. He's getting what's coming to him, Dave Brown. Taking a good look at him. Got the Master of Pain in there. Two against one. Texas Dirt out of there before Master of Pain is able to get the mask untied. Hand is raised. Master of Pain notwithstanding. Texas Dirt walks out of here with a victory by, just by, by uh, getting a three count in two minutes, 16 seconds. Two minutes, 16 seconds of action. Texas still looks all right, doesn't he? He sure does. He looks uh, looks very good as he got that victory in there. We got a break, and then we'll be back here in just a moment with more CWA action. Championship Wrestling is headed to Princeton, Kentucky, Friday night, September the 8th, with an all-star card, including the Rock and Roll Express, Bill Superstar Dundee, and Freddie. Don't miss the action this Wednesday night, Orangeboro, Kentucky. Opening match, Dale Mann versus Don Harris. Tennessee Street Fight, Bill Dundee and Dustin Rhodes versus Black Bart and the Dirty White Boy. Handicap match, Dundee joins Midget's Farmer John and the Little Road Warrior to battle the Master of Pain. Buddy Landell will be blindfolded when he meets referee Frank Morrell. Tag action, 
Jason and Freddy take on Harold Harris and Nate the Rat. Added match, loser leaves town, Texas Dirt wrestles the master of pain. Handicap tag action, three-leg race rules, the Rock and Roll Express versus Wild Side and the Blackbirds. And the main event, Lumberjack match, six wrestlers stationed at ringside as Jerry the King Lawler gets his shot at Ronnie P. Gossick. Six wrestlers around the ring. Don't miss the action. Wednesday night, Owensboro, Kentucky. Yeah, or even though the master of pain interfered, Ronnie Gossett sent him in there. That's right. He don't have to send him in now because he's booked in this match. If master of pain get out here, his opponent's in the ring. That's true. We're waiting for him here. In the ring right now, uh, Donnie Kelly, he's a 243-pounder waiting for the master of pain. He's going to look small compared to the master of pain, who comes in at 6'9", 325. Ronnie P. Gossett over in the master of pain's corner. Uh, pain steps through the rope. Take off the uh, sunglasses and uh, all the hardware. Referee Jerry Calhoun will call for the match to start. You may be able to hear the crowd. That's because Ronnie P. Gossett is over that way. Master of Pain. Whoa, big boot. He nails Donnie Kelly. I thought you were going to do something about these freeloaders over here every week. You should be censoring these people that come in here and screening them. Every one of they're them are more than welcome. Like you, Eddie Marlin. That's they're, what they're welcome. Here. Got a terrific crowd here with us this week. You take a good look at the master of pain because, like I said before, he has retired more people than Social Security. That's just a sample of what your buddy Texas Dirt is going to get. And if you get in the way, Eddie Marlin, you'll get some of the same. Just because you're 70 years old, there's no sign we won't knock you on your butt. You know, you, one mistake you've made. you may need to take a close look at the master of pain, Ronnie P. Gossett, because uh, with that stipulation in the upcoming match, he may be Ronnie leaving the CWA. Left. That's right. Oh, look at this. Gossett nails Donnie Kelly from outside here. Ronnie P. Gossett. One of the most disgusting individuals we've ever had around here. Oh, boy, Master of Pain nails Kelly with that folding metal chair. He got him right in the back. Referee. Just get back over to the ring. Kelly back up on his feet. I don't know how. He comes under the bottom rope. Master of Pain is right there, whips him into the rope. Oh, and then it's a head-on collision. And a cover. One, two, and three. That's it. Well, the, the master of pain has just defeated Donnie Kelly. Kelly a lot bigger than, uh, than the uh, little guy who was wrestling against Bill Dundee. But he didn't want no part of Texas Dirt. Well, he didn't. He got out of there. You know, I was just talking about a, a match which occurred uh, uh, recently in which Bill Dundee was having to wrestle one of the little people, one of the midget wrestlers, and Master of Pain got involved in uh, in all of that, too. Um, it, That's right, Dave. I imagine Bill Dundee, he hated to climb up in the ring in that match, but he asked me to book a special match, and I booked that match for Bill, and he has an interview right here. To yeah, he has some comments. Let's listen to what Bill has to say. Ronnie P. Gossett, got to be the world's worst promoter. All that you dreamed up last week, brother, was hogwash, and you know it, Jack. You stacked the deck against everybody at Walk Todd Isle, including you, truly, Bill Superstar Dundee. Oh, yeah, you had me in there with some little fella with a mask on, and you had a monster standing there as a referee. And, brother, that happened exactly what we thought it was. He couldn't help himself but knock the superstar out. Well, that's fine. I've been knocked out before. But we're right back this week with a real promoter, Eddie High Pockets Marlin. Now, he has come up with one, brother, and I'm going to embarrass you, fat boy, and I'm going to embarrass that big monster, Master of Pain, as you so call him. Because you got, like you said, not the biggest guy in the world, Told you for years, five foot seven, 200 pounds, but I just don't know it. The Lord never told me. I think I'm six feet tall, but I have for my partner this week, big boy, two little fellas, two little midgets. One is Farmer John, and the other one's a little road warrior. And he thinks he's the big road warrior. So let me tell you something, brother. Just imagine this. Get this in the back of your mind. Hog jaws and master pain, if you can picture this. 
The two little guys is running back and forth, and they're scooting through between his legs, and he's turning around, they're biting him on the fanny, and they're biting him on the back of the legs, and I'm up front punching his lights at, brother. That's right. So when you're turning around looking for my two little partners, scooting all over that mat, brother, I'm going to be bashing your brains in, and I'm going to make you a promise, Master Payne, and you hog jaws, that your big monster is going down by the hands of Bill Superstar Dundee, Little Farmer Pete, and the Little Road Warrior. And as sure as my name is Bill Dundee, that's taking place, Ronnie P. Gossett. We're taking your monster out, boy. Bill sounds very happy about the match, and I think he described it very well. It should be a very entertaining match to it watch. It will. I got to look at that match. I tell you, it should be a good one coming up here. We've got more coming up right here for you, and we'll be back with it in just a moment. Hey, Freddie and Jason coming up a little bit later on today, but right now we got a match with uh, Harold Harris, a gentleman and a scholar. Ronnie P. Gossett called him. That's right. And uh, his Blackbird's coming in here right now. Very interesting team. Should be. In the ring right now, Tim Hall and uh, Chris Frazier. They are waiting for uh, Mr. Harris to bring the Blackbird's in here. The Blackbird's, of course, uh, Iceman Parsons and uh, Brickhouse Brown. Here they come, headed into the area right now. The Blackbirds. Rickhouse Brown out of Miami, Florida. Iceman out of out of uh, St. Louis. Stepping up onto the ring apron, finally. And wait a minute. I want to make one thing very clear. His name is Iceman King. There's only one king here, and you're working on the Yeah, we know who the king is around here. Guarantee you that, Mr. Harris. Rickhouse Brown starts. He started. Looked like he jabbed Chris Frazier in the throat, too, didn't he? That was an open-handed slap by Iceman. But he's got those. Uh, he's got that glove on the left hand. I don't know if he has anything in that glove or not, but never know what he's got. He slapped Frazier again while he's down on the mat. Parsons looks to the corner. You go for the tag. No, he just takes him over there and lets Brickhouse slap him around a little bit. Snap suplex and a cover. Count of one. He picks him up with a hair. Nice man, Parsons. Calls for the boot. Brickhouse Brown obliges, and they run Chris Frazier's head into it. Frazier started the match for his team. He's been in there all the way. But not for long, because Brickhouse Brown just threw him over to the corner as if to say, tag your partner. Let's uh, see what we can do with him. Tim Harris in there right now. A couple of young guys, Tim Harris and Chris Frazier. Brickhouse Brown drops down on him, and again, Brickhouse Brown pretty well in control here. He's got him by the hair, count of two, he picks him up. He's jerking him up, but I guarantee you he won't jerk up a team like the Rock and Roll Express. Now you're right. A little bit of difference here. When they see that, oh, look at this, Harold Harris. Jumping all over Tim Harris, who's been thrown down here on the floor. Harris with that cane. Now he rolls Tim back into the ring where Brickhouse Brown is waiting for him, and he stomps on him a bit. Over to the corner of the Blackbirds to make a tag. Tim Harris off the rope, gets a double clothesline. Look at Parsons, just slapping him. Didn't even try for the cover. I don't know if he could have held him for three or not, but he didn't even try for it. There's a the cover. One, two, no, he picks him up at the two count. <laughs> Referee's calling for a break. I, what, he must have been choking. Uh, had that arm wrapped around his throat. Chris Frazier nailed by Parsons while he was at it. He knocked him off the ring apron. So Frazier is down on the floor, and now just Tim Harris all along. Well, he's not in the ring for long as Parsons throws him through the rope down onto the floor. Uh, Parsons nails him with that big broad arm. Harris 
smacked again, rolled into the ring. Nice man over to the corner. Brickhouse Brown coming back in. Brickhouse flying through the air, presses it down to the mat, count of one, two. This time he doesn't pick him up. He pins him for the three count. Three minutes, 37 seconds of time. And the team of the Blackbirds gets the victory. 337 once again. The time on it. Blackbirds uh, coming out of the ring here. Given the opportunity to see if they have something to say about uh, this match coming up. What is this? Yeah, we got something to say. What is this fiasco that's going to be here? What are you doing trying to put tights on me again? You're trying to make an example of me. I see that. So I've got a big surprise in store for you and those two freaks we got to get in the ring. Now, my guys are wrestlers. They're not clowns. This is not a bloody circus. So why have you got their legs taped together? Tell me that. Answer me that. Why have you got their legs taped together? Well, you got four men against two. No, oh, this has got to be the stupidest thing I ever been a part of. You know me for a long time, man. I don't like to be made to look like a clown. You understand? And it ain't beyond me to knock the old man out. You better get your act together, Mr. Promoter. Don't book me in nothing like this ever again. Let me tell you something. Nobody's making you act like a clown. You're doing it yourself. Look, man, I've been from one globe to the other end of the globe. You understand me? And I ain't seen nothing like this in my life. But when they told me, Mr. Iceman, you're going to Tennessee, I knew this was Rudy Poot country. You bunch of dead beach. That's a good example over there, look. But that's all right. You saw what happened here today. You know what? It's going to happen again Monday night. Let it don't matter. You if you don't like Tennessee, you can take the same bus out that you took in. Hey, old man, you better go. Hey, why don't you guys just take it out of here and settle it in the ring? You are booked. You set up. Dave, show up on the job, Brown. You ain't got nothing to do with this. Pay to do what you have to do. Interview and not interrupt. It ain't gonna make no difference what you do. We gonna kick rock and roll tail all over the CWA. You started and all these standards we're not gonna play tennis. And they don't need you worrying about it because we ain't we ain't worried. You understand, because this is what we do best. So try our stuff, because it don't matter. I'll tell you one thing I paid to do, and that's to tell you we're going to take a break, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Championship Wrestling is headed to Princeton, Kentucky, Friday night, September the 8th, with an all-star card, including the Rock and Roll Express, Bill Superstar Dundee, and Freddie. Don't miss the action this Wednesday night, Orangeboro, Kentucky. Opening match, Dale Mann versus Don Harris. Tennessee Street Fight, Bill Dundee and Dustin Rhodes versus Black Bart and the Dirty White Boy. Handicap match, Dundee joins Midget's Farmer John and the Little Road Warrior to battle the Master of Pain. Buddy Landell will be blindfolded when he meets referee Frank Morrell. Tag action, Jason and Freddie take on Harold Harris and Nate the Rat. Added match, loser leaves town, Texas Dirt wrestles the Master of Pain. Handicap tag action, three-leg race rules, the Rock and Roll Express versus Wild Side and the Blackbirds. And the main event, Lumberjack match, six wrestlers stationed at ringside as Jerry the King Lawler gets his shot at Ronnie P. Gossick. Six wrestlers around the ring. Don't miss the action. Wednesday night, Owensboro, Kentucky. Right. This Wednesday night, Owensboro, Kentucky at the Sports Center. Going to be a little different story, Ronnie P. Gossip, because Eddie Marlin is back as a promoter. What about Buddy Landell last week shooting his mouth off, Frank? Well, Buddy Landell did, did beat me in, but Eddie Marlin came to me and said that Buddy was bragging that he, he can beat me blindfolded. Blind but there's no way, Buddy Landell, that you can beat me blindfolded, and I'll prove that this week. That's right. That's going to be right there at the Sports Center, Owensboro, Kentucky. But the match I'm looking forward to is that last main event, Ronnie P. Gossip, because it's me and you, big boy. Boy, you and I, one-on-one -on -one in the ring, but a little bit different stipulation. It's going to be a lumberjack match. There's going to be lumberjacks all around the ring. And let me tell you who it's going to be. It's going to be Rick Morton, Robert Gibson. It's going to be Bill Dundee. It's going to be Freddie. It's going to be Jason. It's going to be Dustin Rhodes. That's the lumberjacks around the ring, and each one of them is going to have a big leather strap. And if you try to get out of that ring, they're going to beat that fat butt of yours till the blood runs down and fills your shoes up. I promise you, you're going to hurt Wednesday night, gossip. 
Before we get to the uh, expiration of time match, Eddie, I want to take uh, just a moment here for uh, the fans. A lot of folks ask uh, about uh, Jerry Bryant uh, time after time. Jerry, uh, you wrestling fans, I think most of you know, uh, got one of those tough breaks in life where he uh, contracted Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, one of the greatest attitudes I've ever seen, there is Jerry right there with, uh, with his friend, the king, of course, Jerry Lawler. Uh, the medical bills are pretty staggering, as you might imagine, for something like that. And if you would like to help out Jerry Bryant, there is a fund which has been established, the Jerry Bryant Fund, Post Office Box 34428. That's 34428, 6767 Summer Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee. The zip code is 38134. If you'd like to contribute to help out with those tremendous medical bills, that's the address of the Jerry Bryant Fund. And of course, we wish him well. Dave, he's one of the finest young men I ever met in my life. He is indeed. Tremendous man, Jerry Bryant. Tell you what, uh, we uh, had we got rough and ready and bad winners in here. Here comes Jason and Jeff Jarrett. I didn't do nothing. Why it wasn't me? Oh, boss is a little unhappy about a match you got him booked in. Yeah, he's he's we said, hey, I didn't do it. It was Gossip's fault. Last last week here on CWA Championship Wrestling, uh, Gossett hired Boss Winter to be his referee, and uh, he says he called him down the middle. He he had uh, he had serious sight difficulties, I think, during a bunch of those Yeah, we're underway. Jason and Jeff Jarrett partners here. Jason stalking around the ring. We had been telling you that uh, Freddie and Jason would be here. Oh, I see Jason is after Boss Winter. Freddie did not arrive. And Eddie, I got to tell you, we don't know where he is, and nobody volunteered to go look for him either. But uh, Freddie will be around, but uh, transportation difficulties, obviously. So uh, Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett agreed to step into the ring today. You did yeah. it. I didn't do it. Yeah, you got them all after you, boss. You're the one that got them all after you, the way you call those matches when you were refereeing. That's exactly what happened. Jeff Jarrett in there. That's rough. Now the team are rough and ready. Jason standing over in the uh, ring apron while Jeff Jarrett wraps up that left arm, puts a twist on it, and with a wrist lock takes him down to the mat. Boss winner around attempting to quiet the crowd. They're yelling, yeah, let's go, Jeff, let's go. <laughs> Not my problem. That's right. <laughs> Boss Winter. There's a lesson here. Sometimes you bring things on yourself, and that's exactly what Boss Winter has done. Maybe he'll uh, think seriously about it before he gets involved in something like that with Ronnie P. Gossett again. Jeff over to the corner. He's reaching for the tag with Jason. Jason uh, out of position. Now back up on the ring apron. That's Reddy. Reddy has decided he does not want to face Jason. He's back through the ropes. Jeff's staying in there. I thought Jeff might turn and tag Jason at the last moment, but he didn't do it. Jeff is staying in there. We are running real short on time here. Our expiration of time coming very, very quickly. Rough and ready against Jason and Jeff Jarrett. We've got less than 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds to go at the time limit. Jason stalking ready. Ready doesn't look so ready right now. He's backing away from him. Time winding down. About 15 seconds left, something like that. There 
there's a tag made on Jeff Jarrett. Jeff steps in there, sends Reddy firing into the ropes. Rob Dixon puts it down. Here's the cover. One, two. He got it. Well, he just beat the time limit, too. Not much time left. We've got to check that time, and I know there's not much of it. We'll be back with you in a moment. In that first ball in uh, about three and a half minutes. Uh, there, Jason right there, you saw a nice close-up look at it. There he is again. Jason. The partner of Jeff Jarrett. Jeff got the victory in that opening fall. He just beat a time limit on it. We thought uh, everything was out, but second, we've got a couple of more minutes of time, so what we've done is kind of made some rearrangements, and we decided uh, Eddie uh, says, hey, I'm back in charge as promoter here. We're going to wrestle as long as we have time. So that's what that's we're right. going to do. As long as we have time here today, we're just going to take it out with wrestling action. <laughs> Certainly a blessing because I can almost guarantee you that uh, if we had not done this, Ronnie P. Johnson oh, would have been back out here. Did you see that? You My goodness. Of electricity, didn't it? Wow. He about passed uh, Neptune like the uh, Voyager did here. But he don't a couple of weeks ago. No, I tell you what. You can't have stinking monsters out here. Well, you Jason, in the ring right now. Boss Winter has been denying since he walked out here today that he had anything to do with any of this stuff. Except you fans who were watching us last week, you'll recall that Boss Winter was a special referee hired by Ronnie P. Gossett on the spot. And I think I said last week that Boss did one of the worst jobs of refereeing I'd ever seen. Rough, out of the ring. Jason waiting for him in there. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jason just, uh, Pull that uh, mask up, that white mask. And he's scarier without the mask than he is with it on. Where is it? Jason, with those big hands wrapped around his throat, rough, pushed back on the ropes. Jason with a big boot. Jason grabs both of them and runs their heads together. He did. <laughs> Can't do that, says Boss Winter. And Eddie says he certainly did. There's a tag. Jeff Jarrett will be coming back in. Jeff with a big right hand. Jeff in the ring with uh, Ruff on the mat. He's got an arm bar on him. Jason out on the floor with a folding metal chair. He is looking for Boss Winter. There you see Boss. Boss uh, setting a land speed record as he runs around the ring here. <laughs> oh, Jeff Jarrett jumps out there, and Boss Winter goes through the ring. Jeff got him by the ankle. Jeff's got him. Jerry Calhoun says, Jeff, you got to let him out of here. And Jeff says, hey, he's the one that came in here. Jason says, I see him. <laughs> Jeff goes back to keep rough and ready out of the action. We are again getting short on time. We're down to one minute. One minute left in the time limit. Doesn't matter.